things are obviously an important thing in the battlefield. But how did they become important? In this video, we'll be going through on the history of tanks. Tanks started out as an idea, civilization, as a way to tackle their enemies by brute force. But actually making tanks centuries ago without inventions like the internal combustion engine was impossible. But that didn't stop armies from making tanks, but not really tanks. For example, war elephants were a candidate of tanks, and this one is technically the tank because elephants are pretty huge and strong. They were used to charge enemy lines and overpower smaller ar armies. They were feared and useful. They even traveled through the Alps led by Hannibal, although most of the Paris three remaining were successfully used in the Battle of Trivia, where they panicked the Roman cavalry and Gallic allies. Then cannons arrived. I mean, to be honest, War elephants were pretty cool, but I guess cannons are pretty cool too. Leonardo da Vinci is also credited as one of the main inspirations of the tank. The reasons for this? Well, he made a design, the design of a wooden tank that, that in theory was moved by human power and handcuffs. But in reality, both models have shown that it was not as efficient as theorized. The beginning of the development of the tanks that we know today started in 1898, when a man named F.R. Sims made the Motor Scout. It wasn't anything surprising really, it was just a Maxim gun mounted on an iron plate on a quadricycle, and there was a half horsepower engine also. But the inventor of the Motor Scout made the next big thing, the Motor War Car. Although never implemented in battle, it was a far better improvement than the Motor Scout. It had a 16 horsepower engine and 6 millimeter armor. Now, instead of one Maxim gun, there were two Maxim guns to amp up the power. I don't think armored cars were irrelevant in battle. In World War I, some were used to scout the enemies. Then, the first tanks arrived. It was World War I. And trench warfare made the usefulness of armored cars in battle not really helpful. So the British Army wanted to make tackle on armored cars that would be able to drive on roads, broken ground, and barbed wire. It was designed to only break the Western Front's deadlock and enter enemy territory. So it also needed to deflect bullets too. Britain was ready to use tanks and made a prototype called Little Willie. And the first actual tank to be used in, in battle, the Mark I, followed soon. After the, after the Will, Little Willie as its base, the Mark I was a tank that started it out, and not the most of the course that tanks today. For example, wolves didn't go very far in rough terrain, and in the trenches and water places, that was very common. So the solution was to put now common place tank threats, which 28 tons, which have a 4 miles per, four, four miles per hour, and a Yomar range from 6 to 12 millimeters, was on the Rokosa defense gun to a conventional tank cannon. Require 20 rounds a minute and 3 machine guns for safety. As the war went on, the Mark series was improving and new designs were used in, rest in World War I. But Britain wasn't alone in, make in the making of tanks. Simultaneously but independently, tanks were also developed in France. The first French tanks were called the Snyder CA1, which had an actual tank turret with how tank suit. But could do a moderate amount of damage with a small cannon and 2 machine guns. Russia also did research and development in tanks, but was unable to use a tank by the end of the war. They did build some prototypes though, and the most famous of these was the SAR tank. This piece was a big tank, and the big wheel itself took and the big wheel itself stood seven feet tall. Armed with three cannons, there was two hundred and fifty horsepower per wheel. Even the Germans got into the tank action by releasing a single tank of the war. The A7V was not a very good tank because even though it sealed from thick metal, 
It can defend from tank cannons or the firing weapons used for tanks at a time. On road, it could reach 9 mil miles per hour, but off road, it wasn't that fast and got easily stuck in rough terrain. The first tanks were not game changers of warfare, but it wasn't until 21 years later that the new war emerged, and so did new tanks. World War II was the war where tanks started their modern development. With a new war and new challenges, no longer were tanks these single-use weapons or prototypes that never came, tanks were an integral part of the battlefield. The Allies and the Axis were trying to build new tanks, and they did. In fact, there are so many tanks produced in this era for the sake of the video, I'm going to list the important ones. So, let's look at the tanks of both sides of World War II, starting with the Allies. The USSR upped its tank research and development it with its tanks, and actually produced and released lots of tanks. But arguably the most famous tank of the Soviets, and the most important of World War II, was the Soviet T-34 tank. The T-34 was a medium tank with substantial power and relatively cheap production cost. It was, it was incredibly hard to damage because of its slope design. It went 33 miles per hour, was faster than its ancestors. It was designed as a successor to the T-26, an infantry tank that was made between the wars. 80,000 T-34 tanks, spanning many versions, were produced by the Red Army. The Soviets used the tank up until the 1960s, and in some nations, it is still used to this day. The T-34 wasn't the only tank the Soviets produced. T-series of tanks went through a number of iterations throughout the war. The T-37A tank was a tank that could be durable in land and in water. It was the first amphibious tank to be mass-produced, but it had slow speeds and a lighter weight than most tanks. The T-38 soon followed, which said the T-37A tank, tank top slightly better, but it was temporary and was soon replaced by T-40 tank. The T-60 tank was part of an experiment to put gliders in on tanks. Even though it never reached success, it showed interest in innovative technologies in other nations. There was a T-70, there was a T-70, which was a light tank, and the T-80 and T-90, which never got released, although a few T-80 was produced. There was also the KV-1, which was useful to the Soviets, until the T-34 arrived and made the KV line obsolete. The UK put out tanks too. There was the Matilda 1, which was short-lived, and the Matilda 2, which lasted the, great, lasted the war. These two tanks had great armor, but lower speed, making them great for close combat. The Valentine and its successor, the Churchill, which was used well after World War II. The Crusader was the sixth iteration in the Cruiser MK line. The other MPs were failed. The Crusader was slightly a success by a mass production of five 5,000 units and had other iterations in the future. It wasn't until the Cromwell arrived that the Crusader line stuck its stride. Weighing 30 tons and going 40 miles per hour, it was packed under one cost as the suspension could give out after such high speeds. So they cut back to 32 miles per hour to keep reliability up. Successful in D-Day, the Cromwell saw continuation to use after World War II. The Cromwell was replaced with the Comet, and, it's more, and the Comet is more of a post-war era tank than the World War II tank. The US wasn't really interested in tanks at first. They didn't do much research and development on tanks, and in World War I, transporting heavy vehicles across the sea seemed expensive, especially with the, especially with the technology at the time. But with bombing in Pearl Harbor and the US entering the war, the US was ready for a tank battle. The M3 Stewart was a light tank that could be seen as a staple to the custom casing. It was a successor to the M2 tank and the prototype T2. The M4 Sermon proved to be a major success and is one of the most iconic tanks ever made, weighing 3 tons and going at an average speed of 3 miles per hour because the tank managed it maintained its specs and an easy repair and production process, the M4 Sermon was a tank for America. The Germans had the best tanks in the war. 
Germany really improved our research and development on tanks and its shows. The first tank they put out was the Panzer I. It was originally used to prepare Panzer troops and prepare the industry for tank making. It had two obsolete machine guns, meaning it wasn't very effective against actual tanks. The Panzer II followed and they weren't very fast or didn't have much capabilities, but they had an increased gun which made it capable of engaging with other tanks. The Panzer III is the first medium battle tank Germany had created and the first tank to have an intercom. The Panzer IV was an improvement of the Panzer III, but production was halted after Operation Barbarossa because they were outclassed by the T-34 and the KV-4 Russian tanks. The Tiger I was next on the line. Its 88mm eight, eight, eight gun and its powerful armor made it so indestructible that it was said that 5 M4 Sermons would have to a single Tiger I tank and that the Sermons would one, only one would come out. The Tiger II would improve on the design, firepower, and armor. The Panther was followed which improved the Tiger's gun and had heavier armor than the Tiger. There was plans for a Panther II, however it was never mass produced. There were other tanks like the Storm Digger, which was a German assault gun but on a Tiger I test chassis and armed with a 380mm rocket pro propelled mortar and a Jack Panther, a highly successful tank destroyer built by Germany during World War II based on, based on the chassis of the Panther tank.